think it's a fantastic time for co-design, for re-examining how we did computer architecture, and rather than building general purpose machines which have to serve all comers, looking at domain-specific architectures, I think that the potential is huge to do really interesting work that has a huge impact on society. Other people have done that kind of research prototypes, but this, this is the first serious effort. I think it's going to be a tipping point of acceleration for machine learning. We'll look back to the, this TPU as the, as the first exciting example of it. Machine learning has taken off in the past five years, powering a revolution in natural language processing and image recognition. However, machine learning is computationally expensive, and as these technologies have spread, increases in the speeds of CPUs and GPUs haven't kept up with the need for more computing power. Domain-specific architecture, creating specialized chips that are inflexible but faster and more efficient, may be the solution. This approach is the heart of Google's Tensor Processing Unit, a dedicated chip built for neural networks and machine learning. About five years ago, Google looked up and said, wow, this stuff is really taking off. If it takes off in the way that we expect it to, and suppose people talk to their their handsets or whatever for three minutes a day, will be buried in such a wave of computation that we would have to double or triple the size of Google's computer fleet, which is already substantial. We wouldn't be able to afford to fuel this revolution in machine learning if we just use standard computers. So Google decided to build their own. The, the setup for these so-called domain-specific architectures is the ending of Moore's Law. In the last year, computers only got 3% faster we're power limited as well, and that's forcing a change from what we did in the past in terms of uh, general purpose computing to do these domain specific architectures. So the first generation tensor processing unit is a very special purpose architecture that's customized to do the deep learning calculations and pretty much that small set of primitives extremely efficiently compared to even the uh, high performance graphics processing units that were the things that originally sparked this revolution. We revived an architectural idea from the 1970s called systolic arrays, which was a kind of parallelism that is elegant and beautiful, and for certain calculations, particularly matrix multiplication, it's unbelievably efficient. The computation is relatively simple, that's as Cliff said, and typically the building block is matrix multiply. And if you're a hardware designer, that's, that's like mana from heaven, right? Is what is the thing that I want to accelerate? Well, matrix multiply, I know how to do that. The other piece is that we changed our numerical representation. And it turns out that you can get away with a much smaller se segment of the real number line at much lower resolution and still do these neural network computations. And so the combination of a large number of matrix multiplication operations and a tolerance for low resolution meant that we could specialize to that and deliver a device which is transformatively better than the contemporary solutions. They first considered a field programmable gate array because uh, Google hadn't done very many chips at that time, and that was seen to be uh, an easier task. It, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get our feet wet with FPGAs. We realized that the FPGA solution would not be competitive, whereas the ASIC had an order of magnitude more possible ALUs you could put into it. With an order of magnitude more ALUs, you can actually be inefficient in mapping to it and still come out ahead. And so they kind of, uh, you know, jumped in with both feet and he said, we're going to do a chip compared to CPUs and GPUs were about 15 to 30 times faster, but in particular, uh, a, a really interesting metric of in the limits of power is the performance per watt, and with that, we're, I think it's 30 times uh, a GPU and 80 times a, a CPU faster. Machine learning itself is a remarkably general purpose technique, and from the initial wins in speech and image recognition, we keep on discovering new applications. And so translation is a breakthrough, and playing Go is a breakthrough. And for each of those problems, there are, there's a combination of algorithm and hardware and software techniques that one can look at, re-examine, break open, and come up with similar sorts of 10x or 100x wins in each of those areas. I think that the potential is huge to do really interesting work that has a huge impact on society. The only path forward is domain-specific architectures, and it makes sense in the data center, which is what the TPU before, but it also makes sense for the phones, because it's, it's similarly energy limited, or we're already starting to see phones with these special purpose accelerators for machine learning, and I think we'll see a lot more of it. Is yet to be understood. We're in the midst of that revolution right now, which is why it's particularly exciting to both be doing the machine learning stuff and to be enabling machine learning stuff with new computer architectures. 
Find out more in Domain-Specific Architecture for Deep Neural Networks, a contributed article in the September 2018 Communications of the ACM.